What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are broadcasting from my childhood bedroom. I was doing so well at List Week, everything was going so smoothly and then I forgot my camera which has my memory card and so I cannot edit while I'm here at my folks house but I'm always telling artists to make it work, to not worry so much about quality when they're posting stuff and to just get it done and so I'm going to take my own advice, I got my phone, I've got a lamp and I'm in my bedroom, I've got this uh... Hitmonchan card and uh, a bunch of other random crap from my childhood days in here, even though the room's kind of an attic at this point, but we're going to make it work. So we've already looked at the best country albums, and we looked at the best hit country songs, and today we're going to do another best of list. It's also going to be songs, but these are going to be non-hits or non-singles or just like minor hits or deep cuts, whatever you want to call them. It's just all the other music and it's the most impossible list to make. I always slave over this and I'm like, this is so stupid. It just basically becomes, what are some songs that I want to talk about? And maybe that's what it is this year, but I did my best to try and list the most impactful songs that really just stuck with me and I really thought about and remembered the most this year. I was only going to do a top 10, but I kind of did a top 20, so I'll keep it really short on all of these. And to keep things relatively fresh, I've limited myself to just five double dips from things that I have already covered earlier in list week because otherwise I would just be repeating myself this whole video and I want to talk about some other good music from 2020. Standard disclaimer is just my opinion blah 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 let's get into it. Starting off the list is Kane Brown's For My Daughter. Yeah, I grew up without a day. I'm gonna be the best one I can be. Kane Brown makes a lot of music I don't love, but sometimes he nails it. And that's absolutely the case on this early quarantine release where he is reflecting upon his role as a father and how he wants to do better than the father that kind of left him in the dust. It's co-written with Tom Douglas, who always brings out the best in his co-writers. He wrote The House That Built Me. I would love to hear more of this kind of substance from Kane Brown. And he sounds awesome on it too. And number 19 is Lori McKenna's The Balladeer. Balladeer waits in the wings. Lori McKenna, queen of the channel, surrogate mom of the channel. We love her in these parts. The Tree was my number one album of 2018. And The Balladeer didn't make my albums list, but the title track, Rules, it's a song about a love triangle between a balladeer, a guitar man, and a background singer. And it is also about taking your pain and turning it into music. I'm a sucker for songs like that. It has almost a medieval feel to me. If you've read The Name of the Wind, this song feels like something that would be in the, the music scenes in those books. My only request, and, and we, we beseech the Queen Lori um, as your liege, as your knave. I don't know medieval words, but I, I want to hear one version of this that doesn't have the duo tracking on it because that's distracting the first couple of times I listen, but it don't matter to me anymore. I just love that song. Number 18 in my first of five double dips in this video is Gabe Lee's Imogene. I'm working it all out in Imogene. I talked about this song extensively on the channel before. I love the mystery of it, of why we don't really know why he goes to this town called Imogene. We don't really know why he leaves, but it has the feeling of wandering. And so much of Gabe's music has that kind of road trippy, like Jack Kerouac feel to it in my mind. Number 17 is Talkin' Prairie Boy by Coulter Wall. Brought over some kind of beer, something called an IPA. Coulter Wall's voice is so excellent, and I feel like he really honed in on how to capture it in the way he wants it to be captured on this new album, Western Swing and Waltzes. That song, Big Iron Rules. But Talking Prairie Boy is this moment of attitude on the album, and he kind of calls out the, the, the fake country folk, maybe like the East Nashville hipster crowd, and it's, it's delightful. Number 16 is PMS by Priscilla Block. Well, it turns out I ain't pregnant, I don't need this is definitely the poppiest song on this list, but I really don't care because it's also one of the most honest. It's literally a song about PMS and about her mood swings and eating Taco Bell and how she feels crazy. And um, I feel like this is a subject a lot of people can relate to, but not many people are tackling it in their songwriting. And I think that's what good songs do. They go there and the song goes there. The first time I heard this, it elicited a, a true chuckle out of me. One that reminded me of like when I first heard I'm Gonna Miss Her by Brad Paisley. And I was truly surprised surprised and just let out a belly laugh that's what this song did to me and there's an important place for that in music number 15 is this ain't my town by wade bowen and randy rogers they don't like the way i wear my hat they don't like my sound 
is definitely my favorite song off of Hold My Beer Volume 2, which is an excellent album. And it's kind of like a cousin to Talking Prairie Boy, where they are reflecting on the development of supposedly Austin. You could also look at it as Nashville. And they're being like, don't blame me for what's happening here. This ain't my town. It's a song about wanting the soul of honky tonk life to remain. And it's kind of this winking, very Texan, humorous, anti-establishment song that's maybe appealing to the inner music snob in all of us. Number 14 is Little Less Broken by Luke Bryan. Looks like I'm moving just a little less on with us. If you take away a few of the singles from Luke Bryan's most recent album, Born Here, Live Here, Die Here, you have one of the best mainstream releases of the year. It is such like a complete return to form, pretty dang country, really solid songs on it. Build Me a Daddy is one of my favorite lyrics of the year, but Little Less Broken with the smooth, beautiful vibe, that is the one I kept coming back to, and I think it's gorgeous. If you sort of enjoy Midland sound, then I think you might like this song too. And as the guy that loves to include this clip whenever possible, I'm killing and I be that way. It really surprised me in a great way. Number 13 is Magnolia by Brett Eldridge. Just an evening in that Magnolia. Brett Eldridge's Sunday Drive is another one of these great mainstream albums that I feel like kind of disappeared when the quarantine happened. It is really awesome. I would not really have expected this from Brett Eldridge, but it's this super reflective album. I, you can tell he kind of removed himself from the hubbub of Nashville and made something really soulful and honest. It's so good. Songs like the title track are awesome, but again, it wasn't the most serious song I kept coming back to. It was Magnolia that I kept coming back to. It's the most rollicking, fun song song on the whole album and it features that soulful beautiful voice number 12 is everyone she knows by kenny chesney everyone she knows is about houses you sometimes feel a little bit behind in life like oh crap all my friends are getting married and they're having kids and i'm turning 31 and just like, where am I going in life? Well, this song will make you feel bad and then it'll make you feel great because it's sort of a very down-to-earth take about exactly that feeling. The main character in this song is a girl that's kind of living it up and partying but also has this deep down fear that she's getting left behind but she's also happy with herself. And Kenny's last two albums, Song for the Saints and Now Here and Now, He's like making great music again. And then number 11 is yet another great song on a mainstream album. It's Maddie and Tay's Water in His Wine Glass. Lord, pour water in his wine glass. This is a straight up beautiful ballad about alcohol and the plea of this girl looking at her man being like, Lord, put water in his wine glass. Obviously twisting the kind of idea that Jesus turned water into wine. It's like, can you turn wine into water? please save him. The harmonies are haunting and uh, pristine. That's the word I would use for them. And that's something Maddie and Tay are so good at. And the lyric of this is just super raw and it's serious and beautiful. And I love it. Number 10 is Voices by Joshua Ray Walker. Not only are the lyrics of this song super cerebral and lovely, but it's the vocal on this and the yodel moment that's just show-stopping that happens late in the song that really make it one of the most iconic songs of the year. Joshua Ray Walker's voice is amazing. This album that it came from was really good. And this is, is the obvious standout track from it. Number nine is Payin' Hard by Kit Moore. I'll live with that, sleep with that, make my peace and I'll die with that, yeah. Wild World is one of the albums that definitely grew on me the most throughout 2020, and I kept coming back to it. I love Red, White, and Blue Jean, American Dream. I really like Fire and Flame. But my favorite song on the album is also The Darkest Moment, and it's called Payin' Hard, in which Kip is really thinking about, man, I gotta sow what I reaped years ago, relationally and through wild living. You know, I made these decisions, and he says, my life's a credit card. Buy now, pay later, and I'm paying hard. That is dark and that is real and it is delivered with all of his gruff conviction against some very pretty guitar. I'm going to use my second double dip on the number eight song, which is Martha Divine by Ashley McBride. And if they ever find out, I'll say the devil made me do it. The woman scorned murder track is such a staple of country music. From Goodbye Earl to Gunpowder and Lead to a bunch of Carrie Underwood songs, now even Taylor Swift's new song, No Body, No Crime. 
we have heard a bunch of these and typically a woman gets cheated on she's pissed and she's going to go take some action but i think what's going to make martha divine a classic is that you're just getting a very different perspective you're getting the daughter of an adulterer who is angry that this woman is sleeping with her father but instead of you know taking it out on her father she's loyal to her father and she's like i'm gonna kill this woman i just think the song's badass it's different the drums at the beginning do, 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 that's so exciting I, I love it i just love everything about this song sticking with the murder theme is number seven which is jason isbell's river river is my savior only one i'll ever Oh, I love this song because it really throws you off. It seems like it's a song about personal redemption because he says, the river is my savior. He talks about how it takes away his problems. And, and you're kind of picturing yourself with the warm southern breeze and the tall grass and the water. But you realize that the river solves his problems because... It takes the body away. The person he killed, well, the river will make it disappear. And it kind of throws you off and you're like, oh shoot, this is not a nice little song, is it? But it never feels too dark because the song is so damn pretty and you are just lulled into its spell. It's a hypnotizing song. Number six is Welcome to Hard Times by Charlie Crockett. Life's a casino. Charlie Crockett is someone that has a lot of music and I'm still getting to know a lot of it and it feels like a cross between kind of western cowboy feel and kind of like Louisiana Cajun feel. The melody of the main line in the chorus of the song. Welcome to hard times. I sing that all the time. That's probably the line that was stuck in my head more than any other line of any song this year. When getting the mail. Welcome to hard times. When sitting at a red light. Welcome to hard times. There's something so memorable about that line and he delivers it with that bassy baritone. Welcome to hard times. And I feel like a lot of artists took way too much credit this year for saying like, oh, this song really took on a new meaning for people in the quarantine. This song took on a new meaning for people in the quarantine. This one, you really could sing along and mean it. And the song's about how people aren't that good deep down. And you can project that onto whoever you want to project it onto, but I bet you there were people you thought that about this year. Number five is my third double dip, and it's going to be unapologetically country as hell by Hardy. People say I'm dunk, but I don't really care. I always want to crank this song when I hear it, and I can't help but sing along. The chorus that is a sing-along already in the chorus just feels like this fun, drunken bar song, and it also has the cleverest lyrics in this. I love the line, I've got buck blood on my Sunday clothes, and how evocative that is. I like the pride of him saying, my truck's where my money goes. There is something so in your face in this song, so funny, so happy, and I played it a ton this year. It was actually my most listened to country song of the year my most listened to song overall on spotify was this song by a tiktok kid named Jaden called so what number four is you were mine by tammy nielsen this is probably my favorite vocal of the entire year tammy nielsen has pipes but she just belts this song with a fearsome firepower there's a live version of it that i've watched like 30 times this year probably my line about the song is that it feels so much like a bond theme because it feels a little bit sinister right there with heartbroken but damn that makes for some compelling entertainment number three is my fourth double dip and it's going to be panhandle slim by the panhandlers well, panhandle slim was a proud of the plane this is a song kind of chronicling the story of a legendary Texas cowboy named Panhandle Slim. I am a sucker for Cleto Cordero's voice. You might know him from Flatland Cavalry, where he is the lead singer. But on this song, he takes lead, and he's got such a gentle way of telling the story of this cowboy. And there's so many great lines in it. I love when they say, the crab apple of his mama's eye. I like when they talk about his hat falling like his jaw to the ground. You can visualize everything in this song, and that's part of what makes it so special. But it also just feels like this little campfire tale that really would be sung by cowboys sitting out around a fire among prickly pears at night at number two is sturgill simpson's welcome to earth polywog the redone version on cut and grass volume two of all the songs sturgill redid for his two cut and grass albums none was more successful to me than welcome to earth which is a song already about becoming a father and literally welcoming your son into the world. And in the original, there's this kind of funky break in the middle, but now it's got this bluegrass break in the middle where you start to get this little 
twinkling of mandolin sounds and then the guitars are building and then you get the fiddle by the end of the song and it really feels like the beginning of life how all those instruments layer on top of each other once you get the two minute mark of that song those final three minutes are just a total eargasm and it's i've never said that that's such a gross word but that's what it is it's a very transporting whatever you get it eargasm and then my number one song of the year and my final double dip into a former list is Dixie Darling by The Wild and Blue. Dixie Darling, did you find what you were after? I think this song is so special because it makes me feel so many conflicting emotions at once. On the one hand, it's sort of wistful and romantic, but then it's also regretful, it's also really sad, and you almost wish that Dixie and our narrator would end up together, but then you're also like, clearly this isn't meant to be and this isn't healthy. And something about that feels really alive and really right and really true. And then you add in the beautiful harmonies, which get more exciting as the song goes on, and you, even in that last chorus, when you get that super high harmony on top. And it's just completely full and moving and excellent. I had a couple other songs I was considering on here. I wanted to talk about Skeletons. I wanted to talk about Overshare by Kelsey Ballerini, especially the Ballerini album version. I relate to that song. Uh, what else is here? Without You is my favorite of the new Luke Combs songs. Pretty Things by Cat Hasty. 2016 by Sam Hunt. War With My Mind by Flatland Cavalry. Beer Light by John Party. That's pretty. Country and Western. I love that chorus in the gym. Um, yeah, those were the songs that I was I was kind of considering for this list. But I know this list is sort of stupid, as I said in the beginning. I know I can't talk about all of the good songs. I mean, how are you supposed to narrow it down to 20? There's thousands and thousands released, but that was just like my attempt at it. As I said, all those are linked in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this video turns out okay. So I'll see you guys with a couple more kind of year-end review type things very soon. Love y'all. Bye.